Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this PDA hosted session, Delivering Race Ecology in Pharmacy. The topic of equality has quite rightly been a hot topic of conversation since the murder of George Floyd. Within the NHS, some 21% of the workforce is of BAME origin, and of GPHC registered pharmacists, around 44% identify as BAME. We already know that there's a significant attainment gap uh, in the awarding of the MPharm at university. We know there's an attainment gap at the pre reg exam. We know there's an ethnicity pay gap. And there's a whole layer of other inequalities which are backed up by hard data and evidence. So to discuss this current topic, we have a really wonderful panel of speakers. It is my pleasure to first introduce Tebo Owatami, MP who is the Labour Shadow Minister for Women and Equalities and is also a member of the Health and Social Care Committee. First of all, I would like to thank Tevo for being here today, especially in light of the tragic events over the last few days. I'm sure all of us would like to extend our condolences to all MPs and to the wider Westminster family. Before being elected as a member of parliament, Tevo was a senior oncology pharmacist specialising in cancer and palliative care. Tewo is committed to equality and on being appointed as Shadow Minister, and I got this from one of the websites which uh, had, had mentioned that, championing equality and celebrating who you are goes to the heart of why I stood to be a Member of Parliament. Please welcome Tewo. <laughs> oh, Sorry, still not used to um, wearing this. going to put that here. Can you hear me? Brilliant. And, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> Let me just untangle myself. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. And it's just it's really exciting actually to be back here in the pharmacy world speaking about um, such an important issue to all of our hearts. And um, I am especially thrilled today to um, be speaking to pharmacy colleagues and just be hearing from people's different experiences. To the outside world and to the communities that we serve, it may appear that the subject of BAME in pharmacy is a non-issue, actually, given the fact that the pharmacy profession as a whole has a lot of diversity and representation within the profession. Now, according to statistics by the PDA, just over about 50% of pharmacists are actually within the BAME community. And I'm sure that many of you will agree just as part of your pharmacy schools and your own experience in the profession. But then if we look at that data and compare it to the NHS workforce, only about 20% of the NHS workforce are actually BAME in background. Although pharmacy has a distinguished legacy of diversity in its rank, um, it, that is an aspect of the field that I've always been proud of. However, just being able to recruit a diverse network of pharmacists is not enough. Just because a field has diversity and inclusion does not actually mean that it is without inequality. That's why tackling inequality has to be addressed. And what I mean, what I mean by tackling inequality means that we have to tackle the pay gap across genders. It means we have to have a workforce that allows proportional representation of diversity amongst positions of influence. It means we have to have a workforce that ensures people with disability, with poor mental health are given the reasonable adjustments that they need to have an equal chance of success. Pharmacy, although diverse by those yardsticks, is not without inequality. And I wanna just focus on just a few examples that I have within the pharmacy profession. BAME people working across pharmacy are not equally distributed across pay grades, especially in higher position in promotion structures compared to their Caucasian counterparts who are more likely to have positions of authority or who are more likely to be shortlisted for jobs when they apply for it. BAME workers are also relatively more likely to enter into former dis disciplinary measures um, and we've seen that that's been quite overwhelming um, with the cases due to the fitness of practice data that was released about three years ago. In 2018, the pharmaceutical journey also revealed that actually there's a significant pay gap of about 16% between white and BAME pharmacists here in the UK. 
And before even fully qualifying as pharmacists, there was a noticeable difference in terms of the attainment gap in university. It was about up to 15% of BAME um, students receiving lower grades compared to their Caucasian counterparts at university. Now, all of us here today in this room, as PDA members, are here because we have our interests in terms of diversity and equality within the field. But we all also have a play, a part to play in terms of ensuring that um, there's an increase in diversity and inclusion within the network. And I actually think it's absolutely incredible that the PDA has taken the necessary steps to have the different diversity um, networks that has been created last year in terms of the Bain Diversity Network, the LGBTQ+, and the Ability Network as well. Speaking with many of my fellow pharmacists, um, to me personally, it seems as though there's already been an interest among some of people in terms of joining that group, and I know many people who have actively, um, were quite excited about the networks being created and have actively been involved in the network. But these networks are not a remedy to the equality problems that I referenced earlier within the profession. And I don't think that, I'll be, I don't think anything that I'm saying is very controversial in this room. I don't think that it'd be very controversial if I say in this room that pharmacy is a unique healthcare profession, distinct not only by its breadth of task and knowledge, but that pharmacists maintain, but it has its own internal politics as well. Now, as a politician in my profession, I feel comfortable in identifying some of the politics that we have within the pharmacy profession. We have had our own traditional in our field. We have our own traditions in our field, we have our own recruitment pathways in our field, we have our own promotional pathways, we have our own networking structures and we also have our own culture. And one of the difficulties for a new pharmacist who just passes their exam are just trying to find their way through the different fields and pathways to specialism and through just finding their way through the administration structure and generally the advancements within the profession can be very difficult as the pathways might not always be clear to pharmacists. And I look forward to seeing what the diversity networks can do as a hub to help facilitate that mentorship for new pharmacists in terms of providing advice on how they can move forward and how they can move around the field as that can be rather difficult to negotiate sometimes. The ability to advocate for yourself, for yourself especially as a young pharmacist, in my view and in the view of many people that I've spoken to, um, in my own like, black pharmacist network is really crucial in terms of you being able to advance in the pharmacy profession. It's also vital that we get better support for new BAME MPs, sorry, new BAME pharmacists amongst other equality groups and how to advocate for themselves and, and navigate the internal politics of this field. I can also say that as a young pharmacist who just finished my exams when I finished, I was always grateful and I was always lucky enough to find the right mentorships from black um, men and women within the pharmacy profession who stood, um, who understood the barriers that they had faced and were able to help me navigate through it. They taught me that I would not, they taught me lessons that I would not have learnt in my course in terms of being able to network, in terms of being able to have self-advocacy, in terms of being able to write a good CV and also actually being able to decide what special specialist I would like to end up pursuing in my career. I look forward to seeing how these diversity groups from a dedicated and permanent space that, although I do not formally access to early in my career, I was lucky enough to find myself chanced by circumstances. I'm also hoping that these network opportunities will not only result in more representation amongst equality groups in higher roles within the internal pharmacy structure, but in national bodies as well. And what I would like to see is I would like to see more diverse pharmacists occupying senior roles in national public health bodies, in hospital administration, and even in more colleagues here in government. Pharmacists, we all have a wealth of transferable skills, not just in the medical profession, but with regards to organisation, with regards to communication, and with regards to distribution. Um, and I think that those transferable skills, and with the addition of mentorship and networks to teach fellow pharmacists how to really use them and how to utilise them will go a long way in addressing the inequalities that we have and I genuinely believe that the PDA's diversity network will go a long way in providing 
those forums and those platforms to advance in the equality that we have within the profession. So I, I, it's really exciting actually to see the progress that's being made in terms of addressing equality within the pharmacy profession. And I really do look forward to working with the PDA um, in terms of addressing some of the inequalities that we have within our profession. So thank you. Yeah, just the other way. Sorry, right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Taiwo. That's re really interesting, and it's really nice to see your commitment to addressing equality and diversity, not just within pharmacy, but the within the wider NHS mm. as well, where there have been a whole host of inequalities identified. Our next speaker is Thorin Govin. Thorin is currently the chair of the Royal Pharmaceutical Society English Pharmacy Board, and she won't mind me saying she's the youngest ever to hold this position. Thorin is a pharmacist with a strong media presence and uses social media to advocate for the profession and by all accounts she's a prolific tweeter and we all know the impact which tweeting has and the impact of the hashtag Black Lives Matter. In 2018 Thorin completed a graduate diploma in law and in 2019 an LPC MSc in law and business management. Please welcome Thorin. Thank you, um, and thank you for inviting me uh, to be among this panel, and um, I can't wait <laughs> for, for the next speaker um, as well. It's just so great to be here. I think over the last 18 months, I think that wider society has really opened up its eyes and thought, what, what is going on? Why do we live in a society right now where the same issues that we thought were dealt with years ago are still at the forefront of our minds and it's very sad that we, we are still dealing with um, issues of, of inequality you know we heard about uh, George Floyd and 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 to for people not to be able to feel safe in the society and where they are working um, and even just in general society is, is not right to me and I also think, though, um, that if we are going to deliver race equality, not just in, 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 in pharmacy, but in wider society, we need to start questioning ourselves and our self-awareness about maybe some of the views that we have. So it starts at home for me. It starts with us all thinking, even right now, why do I have the view about that person that I have? Do I have anything to back up what I am saying in my head? You've all got a responsibility to look and think, use your mind to think, what actual evidence do I have for the views that I am putting across about that person? And we've all seen this on social media, as, as we've talked about earlier, um, with, with regards to how we respond to people. Are we replying to them out of a view that we have in our mind of them, or is it based on the actual knowledge that we have of them? Now, delivering race equality for me in wider society means that we each individually call out any issues. So when we saw all the, um, and I saw the, the awful things about Marcus Rashford, obviously it was the Euros, and at the RPS we called that out because it doesn't matter where it occurs, it's not acceptable. Yeah. So you've got an individual responsibility whenever you see any discrimination, whenever you see anything which is negative, which is very, which is not acceptable, whether it be race, whether it be ageism, whatever it is, you need to say, I am not standing up for that. And I think that's part of being a professional as well. I think that we all need to hold up, and the wider society does, the law holds us to a higher account as a professional. So we need to make sure that we are each um, embodying those values of professionalism. And being racist is not a professional attitude to have. And sadly, earlier this year, or I think it was last year, we did have um, someone who wrote into the PJ saying they hadn't seen any issues with race or it wasn't something they'd seen. So I'm sorry, just because you've not seen something doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It's not N plus one. It's not, you know, it's something we have to challenge. And that evening, and I, I'm prone to this, when I see something and it's not right, I have a, I have a, a habit of going home that evening and getting out the laptop and, and writing a letter. So a 
the letter was back to the PJ that evening. Um, so I want you all to think about doing that because as I've talked about at one of my talks earlier today, you are each an ambassador for the profession. So you have a responsibility to challenge things which aren't right where you see them. So if race equality, if delivering race equality in not just pharmacy but wider society starts with you, then it also starts with you talking to the people that you work with. If you, you need to have a chat with them but also in a manner which means that if something is said which is not pleasant or isn't right, they need to be able to trust you and they need to know you're not going to spread it to who you know to the next 20 other people and um, about what they've said you need to have an open and honest conversation with them and say okay i understand you're putting this view across but can i also ask you to think about these other views because if we think about it in an evidence-led profession that's exactly what i would be saying to somebody and if they came into my pharmacy and they were looking at medicine for 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 for, for for condition X and we'd be saying to them well have you considered these alternatives so I'm asking you to go back to your teams and say to them can we have an honest chat about some of the things that you may have biases about and and can you make sure that you and, and can we have a dialogue about it I consider myself quite a practical person if I'm honest I think we can sit here all day and talk about race equality but it has to be that we're individually doing something that there's practical actions from today and already in, when I talked earlier about building back better as and as um, some of the work that I've done I said to all members I said to the members of the audience what are you going to leave here and do today so what I'm asking you to do, all of you right now, is think about what are you going to leave here and do tomorrow in your pharmacy? How are you, or, or wherever you work, how are you going to challenge the status quo? Because that's the only way that things are going to change. And, and I've got 30 seconds left, so, which, um, so I clearly have timed it right, which just leaves me to say... Um, I just want to thank you for all your hard work that you've been doing over the last 18 months and beyond, not just as a pharmacist, as a professional, but also I think we've come uh, away in, some, in tackling some of the inequalities within, and difficulties and, and some of these biases within the profession, but there's still a long way to go. So let's see where we are in 18 months and there's some been cracking work going on by the PDA, by the, by the RPS as well. So, um, and consider being a mentor as well is my, my a parting message and um, so please think about that because that's a definitely a way of, of helping change people's perspective thank you thank you Thorin for highlighting the, the the responsibility all of us bear for our actions and for challenging things when we see that are clearly wrong our next speaker is Sozi Ken He's a fourth year pharmacy student at the University of uh, Sunderland. Uh, Ken, uh, and that's how uh, he, I've agreed that he should be a, 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 a sort of introduced. Ken is a member of the PDA BAME, BAME network and is also the honorary secretary for the PDA's LGBT network, as well as being a PDA student rep. Ken, Ken is passionate about how the MPharm course could be more inclusive in its content. And that's where all our learning and all our education should start from. That's the starting point. And he's been really uh, proactive. He's got motions passed at the BPSA in support of having better awareness and representation of LBGT matters on the MFARM course. So please welcome Ken. Uh, hi. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, my name is Ken, and uh, I'm not as eloquent as our previous panelists, like Thorin and Teo, um, but I'm just going to speak on two real, really important points that's, like, close to my heart. So, one of the points is, like, when I was going through the oral process, um, I was going through, like, lots of documents and, like, statistics about how pe people perform, and it's broken down into, like, age, ethnicity, um, and stuff like that and like a gender as well but one thing I've noticed was that Chinese students um, consistently like place or well score lower in the SJTs and the MMIs when that was a thing and that was consistent for quite a lot of years and I think it was like either second last or like the lowest and 
I, it, it's a bit disappointing to not like see that for myself and then like well why is no one's talked about this and in like a wider context um, it could be a number of things it could be that um, the way questions are worded and it could be that there's a lack of support for um, Chinese students and um, that's something I want to explore in my second point so I'm not from here I'm from Malaysia and um, I have like Chinese heritage like my grandparents came from China to settle in Malaysia and that's why I'm sort of Chinese Malaysian um, and as like an international student coming to the UK it was so daunting because I didn't know anything about like the systems and um, intricacies of everything so that was one thing and then the other was that there wasn't much support I could access really that like everyone has um, access to support but it wasn't equitable um, people um, didn't consider that actually foreign students might need more support and then on top of that uh, I don't know if anyone's if you heard but like the stop Asian hate sort of thing went off during COVID and that was really bad I think like it's so hard seeing like all my friends go through the same thing and me having to like experience some of them as well it was so tough but I'm really lucky in that I have a really good support system like the PDA um, network has really helped me my family my friends but I recognize that not everyone has that and um, I feel like that sort of bleeds into like your pharmacy career as well like and now you sort of start to see well I can see why like people start scoring low in Oriel because they don't think they can um, access that support and have that same amount of support and you know and all these things happen to them and how they're gonna like process that and no one's taught them how to process that sort of trauma so um, I think like my message to you all is that to think about well can we do more to support people that are less um, fortunate to like access the supports and support systems and do our if you see something in the streets or like please just like if you just go to them and like support them just a few words would really help and you know help them report as a hate crime um, with the police would be great as well and like educate yourself on like microaggressions that's like a big thing as well um, but yeah I think that's all I've got so thank you Okay, so we have a few minutes uh, left for questions. Uh, questions? Toido? And then... Thank you so we, much. We've got very limited time, so it's going to be about 30 seconds per reply, please. Okay. I'll keep it short. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's a question for Tayo. Um, you know when you mentioned um, we need to have equal rights, we need to have more BAME representation? The question I would have is how do we stop it becoming tokenism, tokenistic? Because sometimes you'll have uh, people being hired onto a panel because they fit, take the boxes, um, but they're not there because of their merit. Now, I run an organization that supports pharmacists, and that's a question that I, I've, I think about quite a lot. How do I ensure my organization is as diverse as possible, but based on their merit? and uh, a, a bigger part of that is we do a lot of work with uh, BAME pharmacists and sometimes they feel like they're, they're in positions because they're either female or yeah. they're brown or they're black and they feel like they're not there because of their merit. So there's many layers to that. So the first layer is the fact that actually if we have mentorship at university level, at foundation level, the pharmacist will feel confident enough to know that they've got the skills, they've got the expertise to be able to want to apply for that role, and they would understand just how, how they are competitive in the workforce. Secondly, from a recruitment point of view, is also being aware of the, of the bias that exists and the bias of the individual that we have, people. So looking at the CVs, looking at the different um, professional routes that people have taken, and, and, and actually asking yourself, you know, candidate A to candidate B, which one of them will do really well in this and which one of them actually has had to overcome the biggest obstacles in order for them to be able to achieve what they've achieved in the workforce. If we start as individuals, and we've spoken about this quite eloquently, start to actually ask ourselves what can we do to improve inclusion within our own workforce 
sorry, I realise this is more than 30 minutes, then that will change. But I would definitely say that mentorship goes a long way in the foundation level to be able to provide that support. And let's be honest within the profession, if you really want to, to apart from making it a tick box exercise, if you really want to improve diversity, you can take a candidate who has those skills and, and help them provide that guidance to allow them to be competitive in the workforce. That is one of the strengths of our profession. Everyone here has the ability to get to leadership because we all have the clinical knowledge and that essentially is the key part of being a healthcare professional. Apologies for going over. Yeah. Oh, hello there. Hi. Um, I'm Bio Lukum Pharmacies from um, London and Hastings. Right. My question is um, in terms of delivering race equality in the pharmacy, I don't know what the panel thinks about ensuring we have true race, um, race equality. Now, there's a lot of talk of not using the word um, BAME, because BAME, what does it stand for? Black, Asian, and minority ethnic. So my question is that in pharmacy, when we're looking at the maybe like top positions in executive positions, or maybe like um, the GPHC, the NPA, the PDA, whatever, do we actually ask ourselves, okay, we're talking BAME. How many black people do we have in these positions? How many Asian people do we have in these positions? I mean, do people even know what the meaning of minority ethnic is? I mean, can people give you an example of what a minority ethnic pharmacist looks like? Well, that's like an Arab pharmacist. An Arab pharmacist is a minority ethnic pharmacist. So my question is, in pharmacy, how can we make sure that we're having equality among black, Asian, and Arab pharmacies were minority ethnic pharmacists. Thank you. So, what you really want to say is, I think, or paraphrasing what you said, is that all levels you want to see faces which are familiar, which are part of the profession, yeah. not just at one level, but at every level. I completely understand because I think sometimes if you can't see someone at that level, then who who you know who you can really respond to, then it can be difficult to say how can I be at that level. Um, and I think one of the biggest ways, as we talked about, is mentorship because we've got to say to people, everyone has the opportunity to excel within the profession, but we have to realise that there are barriers to people excelling because of these biases which we've talked about today so as i've said we need to start looking at this as an individual because and then we need to tell other people to go well are you looking at yourself as an individual and challenging yourself and that starts a wave of change which hopefully we've started to see over the last 18 months but it's still not good enough it won't be good enough until we're seeing more people on things like boards one of the things personally that i've done it's been, been a mentor, but also at things when it comes to standing for elections and things like that, it's being really open and saying, you know, come and have a chat with me. And that as a, on an individual basis, I can try and share my time with as much people as possible, bearing in mind I'm a little bit busy, but I think that's part of my duty as a professional is to share the knowledge or to, to make people know that they can do things to empower people. Um, and, and, and as, a, and as, a, as an aside to that, really, is, is just also making sure that, you know, things like these networks, that there's, you know, that they are supported. So that's why the PDA have gone to the effort of making these networks happen. And I'm not saying that the names of these networks are always right, but it's part of the learning learning process I think and, and I'm sure they would like to in the future maybe there may be a change in that name but it's up to the individuals within that group and if people feel strongly I'm sure there could be change thank you thank you very much Lauren. sorry to cut you short we are really short of time so thank you once again for being part of this session if you're not part of the PDA please think about joining the PDA if you're not if you're part of the PDA not part of the networks please join the networks they're there as a support mechanism for all of us and it's we're embracing diversity in all its all its uh, totality uh, the progress we make is now down to collectively all of us to make it happen it's down to us we can make change as all our speakers have said it's a collective responsibility. You can, and you can read a little bit more about this in the Insight magazine, which is there for everyone to take. And once again, thank you very much for being here today. And please thank the panel.